get 120 paper or you've got a really fine grinding stone, put some water on and grind it like that. Right. You, I put my fingers like that, but see if you go like that, you might grind one in more than the other. Put water on the knife or on the, oh, on the, on the paper? Yeah. I'll see if you're not cutting cleanly, then um, um, I'll help you to sharpen it. Now you don't want any grease on anything except for the gilder's tip. So what I do at the beginning of each day um, is go like that. That takes any moisture off or anything like that and keep your fingers off the end there. So I'm a left-hander, so everything's going to be on the left. If you're right hand, everything on the other side. Now there are two of these. These are called tampers. One you keep in your gilding water. Now in your sheet here you've got the recipe for gilding water. It's not in, in, very, very critical, but roughly um, a quarter... Uh, either vodka or um, gin, and three quarters of water, roughly that proportion. The idea of the alcohol is if you put water straight on this, it would bead. Um, so this uh, cuts the surface tension. Okay. Um, and, and this is, as you'll see, for tapping down the gold of it. We then use the larger one a bit later um, for really polishing the gold before you burn it. Now see this here, you've got to keep your gilders kept in really good condition. So get some thick card like that, and when, whenever you've finished, don't push them in like that, always push them in that way. Mm. There's nothing worse than having bits of hair sticking out the side, because when you're laying your gold, picking it up, you've got bits of hair sticking out, you can wreck your gold. So keep those in good condition. The three main sizes, that's the smallest you would use in medium and large. The large is what you'd use for a whole leaf, or almost a whole leaf. Um, in your case, you'd use, did I just get one or two? Two. 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 Medium. So medium, okay, yeah. So I'll put that one aside. It's quite difficult to lay a whole leaf, um, so I won't go into that. But you, it shouldn't be too difficult to lay about three quarters or, or half a leaf, which is what you do if you're... Now these um, need to be oiled up a bit, so just wipe it on your face or your hair. You're not allowed to wash for a month. <laughs> okay. So they're all really grease. Now when you get your gold leaf, it won't come out very easily. So what you do, starting at the um, spine, you roll it up carefully. Little unroll, turn it around and roll it up again. That frees the leaf so it comes out easily. Now, whatever you do, when you open it up, never open it up that way. Why do you think? The gold will collapse in and all crumble. Oh, right. So, which way do you need to do it? So, um, so, when you roll up from the, the spine, turn it and roll up. But when generally you're holding it, and opening it up, don't hold it up vertically. Don't hold it up vertically. Because the, the leaf will collapse in on itself. So always have it down here like that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I was taught um, to pile lots of gold in the back and then bring it out as you need of it. I realised in fact that's quite an inefficient way of doing it. Um, that's designed for people who are standing up outside and um, don't have a table to work on. So it's better to do what I'm doing here, which is just to lay it directly one at a time there. So it's a bit of a, a trick to get it out flat, so don't expect to do it first time. So you flick through your book until you've got a leaf there. Okay. Now, um, you might find another way yourself, but just bend it in the middle of it. You better just stand up. Shake it a bit. See that there? You can see that if you mm. Yeah. And you just pull it out like that. Mm -hmm. So you just, once the front has touched the cushion, just pull it out gently. If it doesn't land properly, no matter, um, what you want to learn to do is to how to um, pick up the gold. So put the sharp end so when it slides underneath it's in the middle. If this is flat so I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally need to do it, but if it's crumpled you need to pick it up and make it flat. So push it, push it down so it doesn't jag. So you can see that cutting edge is in the middle, so when I lift it up it's like that. And this is a bit tricky to do this, you, you've got to move forward and roll at the same time. So you're rolling it, so that's crumpled, so let's pick it up and I'll roll it again. Okay. 
and then with a little puff in the middle, it'll open it up and flatten it. But don't go like that, it'll blow it away. So a little puff, not at an angle, if I blow it at an angle it'll blow it away. So directly down there, like that. Wow. You want it near the front, if it's in the back it'd be very difficult to cut. This here is to stop wind blowing it away, so they're giving away a bit. Okay, now always start from the high and go to the low. The reason being um, is that we put gilding water on. And if I were to gild the bottom first and then gild the top, what would happen? Rub, rub, you can the water will go down on top of the gold. Okay. So always the high first. Um, now you notice the rubbish here, I'm not going to have little thin books. Um, what we want, I'm a left-hander, so I'll start on the right there and go around in that direction. So we want to tilt this a bit away from where you've been laying gold. Because you want the water to flow away a little bit. Don't, not too steep, just a little bit. So if we're going right to left, it's got to be sloping right to left, if it's the other way, the other way. Okay. We don't want water trapped underneath the gold for a long time. That's why we slope it a bit. Okay, so now we want the gold, we're going to cut the gold so it goes down the edge there. And then it can come out of it as well. What I tend to do is just use this as a measuring rod. I've got a few little scratches on this. So if I go like that, I can use the scratch to tell me where to cut. And this is why I'm cutting it this way, because when I pick it up, I don't want to be able to sort of do odd things. So think of the comfortable way to pick it up and cut accordingly. Now the next thing to remember is we're going to be flooding, we're going to go there, we're going to be flooding the area plus a little bit more. So I don't want any water on this brush here, so this is how I pick it up. It's sticking up the front of it, the top, and it's sticking up the side. So that um, this brush is not going to touch any of the gilding water. This is sticking up there, but that's no problem because either I've laid gold there, so it's not going to touch water, it's going to touch gold or what's off the edge. The reason you extend it a little bit is you can see precisely where you put in the gold. If you have it sticking out too far, it'll be flopping around and you're out of control. Mm -hmm. So about that far off the edge. Um, now on a larger icon, um, I don't want any of this to be dribbling all over either the gold I've laid or this. So I what I do is I fold up a bit of paper and put it there. So always you're going this way rather than sort of reaching over gold because this will stain the gold. Any water, any liquid will stain the gold. Um, but this is quite a small one, so I think I can get away with leaving it there. So what I do is I bring it up like that, and this gives you an idea of how far you're going to have to have the gold come, the, the gilding water, we'll bring it up to about there. Now you want it entirely flooded, so you've got to move quite quickly now, not, don't rush it, um, but you don't want it to dry up before you lay the gold. It will soak in very quickly, can you see it, how quickly it's soaking in? See, that's why you've got to get the gold ready first. Okay. Now come up close, hold your breath, and then drop. So it's sort of two movements. I've been a bit cheeky there, I've gone around the corner, which is why it's split. You can fault it within about 30 seconds, and it will still stick. Gold is very flexible. It can go one way, but it, it can't sort of stretch two ways at the same time. So that's split there because it can go down, but it can't sort of go that way as well. Okay. So we pick up another lot. I don't want to pick it up with that, with that wrinkle in there, so let's take that out. So it's quite good if you can move at a pace where it hasn't dried. See, it's dried a bit in there. Ideally, you want the stool to be wet. Now if, if you do, if it has dried underneath, you've got to bring it up just up to the gold. Don't go over the gold, just up to it like that. Put it up there so I know how far to go. Put the gilding water on about 6 mil bigger than the, gold, than the gold. So bring it up, hold it above about that far, and then drop in one confident movement. That wasn't very good. That wasn't a good lay. 
sometimes can take a little while to um, get into the feel of things. It can be quite good to stand up as well. Um, this table is too low for I have a higher table for you. I've got a feeling this lay won't go too well. I've only had about two hours sleep and uh, my hand's not as steady as, as normal. Okay. Now, we come out to a corner. What would happen if I kicked it at that angle? What would happen to the water? We'll the click there. So when you come to the last leg, I think that will, yeah, that will definitely almost go up to the corner. We go this way, so it's going to now go away from the corner. Okay. I'll stand up. You see how with the dry brush, I tamped it down, but the overlap hadn't set, settled down very well, so I tamped it down so it was in contact. That's a good lay. That's how lay should be, isn't it? Standing up can be a good idea. You've got more control, really. So go overlap slightly, yes? Just about a millimetre. Yeah. We'd overlap its double thickness, and it will show up as a slightly different colour. So the, the neater the overlap and the less it is, the better. So you don't flap over every leaf? Yeah. Is there a different way to do the corner? Is that yeah, um, you would normally I've made my leaf here a little a little longer than I would normally. Normally you'd cut it so it would stop about there. So you could easily go around the corner, but because it's gone in quite a bit, this makes it more problematic. <laughs> Keep your eye on what you've laid because um, if you don't tamp down wrinkles, when you come to burnishing, those wrinkles will fall off because the wrinkles aren't in contact with the. Um, aren't in contact with the bowl, so this is why you've got the dry tamper here. Um, it's a bit of an act, you know, when to tamp down, but basically, it's, see these wrinkles are quite fat. See those ones there? Mm -hmm. That's a sign there's water underneath. But when they get thinner, it's okay to tamp down. If you tamp down too early, you'll burst the, the gold. Um, if you wait too long, then there's no moisture, so the, the gold won't stick. So you, what you want to do is tamp it down when there's moisture, but not when it's sort of wet. It's not, it's not liquid. Is the water pull, pull all the way? There is a bit of electrostatic uh, attraction, apparently, yeah. That's why it's a good idea to stop a little bit short of it, because um, if you sort of come in willy nilly, it might grab one end and not the other. So it's better to have control over. And you do, when never it touch with the, br the brush? No. You because just it, it'll let be. The leaf drop. Yeah. Um, well, you can touch, as long as it doesn't touch the. Um, the wet part, or, yeah. Okay, so let's see how that there is quite, um, the wrinkles there are quite uh, thin compared to these fat ones here. Mm -hmm. It's a sign that it's probably okay to tap. Just very gentle tamping. Corners like that tend to trap more moisture, so be wary of that. Tap down the, the join here. Be very careful. If, you, if it moves, there's probably water there still. If what moves? 
if, you, if it's watered in, if you push it, it'll sort of squelch out. So if you kick away from it, you'll actually see the, the ripple underneath. What will happen to that water, though? Will it absorb? It'll all soak in, yeah. Mm -hmm. Really to stand up, but this is too low for me. I get a sore back. But um, the ideal is to have a, 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 a bench like this just right for you. So cut it so it doesn't stick out so far. I really want it stopping just after the, it reached the bottom. It'll be easier to lay. I think I'm going to cut mine smaller. That's being a bit cheeky, really. You'll find after a while, your, as it's done now, it loses a bit of its oil, so you've got to re-grease a bit once in a while. Some books say it's an electrostatic charge, but I don't believe so. I think it's more the oil. Some people put Vaseline on their Yeah, if you haven't got enough oil in your skin or hair, then a bit of Vaseline is fine. But don't over-Vaseline over it, otherwise the, the gold won't come off. Right. Now timing is everything with gilding, so you, and that timing depends very much on the weather. So you can't see you know, exactly one after you lay the gold is ready to burn it. Should we remove the buttons from our, our boards? Um, it'll help. It's quite handy to um, rest your finger on the on the ground as I'm doing, but if it's too high, then you can't do that. Another thing I forgot to mention is, every time you lift up this brush, you, you might get a splash, and you don't want that. A, a splash on top of this will mark it. So um, slide your brush around rather than lift it and drop it all the time. Tamp down the envelope. Just make sure it's in contact. The raised part is the easier part to do, really. Um, the larger areas are where it's a bit more, a bit more tricky. Be, it'll dry more quickly um, near the, the gold. So using the tip here, get right up to the gold. So it's wet right up to the gold. And you, you notice the water will sort of sneak underneath the gold all by itself due to osmosis. direction, so we're not overlapping that direction. If I, if I stroke in that direction, I'll be lifting off the gold, so you stroke in the opposite direction you've been laying. So always tamp first, because if you go like that willy-nilly and there's a bit of moisture, you'll rip the gold, but if you tamp, it gives you a bit of leeway. So if you don't do this tamping, um, when you come to burnish, you'll find that um, the crinkle parts will just break off and you get these fine red lines everywhere, mm -hmm. which is the bowl coming through.
puts a little bit buffered in the book, so I'm not going to use it for the end. <coughs> My knife probably needs sharpening. That's what happens when it's not quite sharp enough. It jags a bit, which kind of slows you down, which you don't want. You might find in the back of your Gilders uh, pa uh, cushion a lot of paraphernalia, sort of bits of leather, and that's for those who stand up, gild who have a table, who are gilding, I don't know, lettering on a window or something. So they hold that in their hand and have all their tools underneath. I'm going to have a red line around the outside, so I'm not bothered about that. I'm going to fix that up. Gold, the water might be going onto the gold with laying, so move it that way now. If you find when you're tamping that you um, poke a hole in the gold, like we've got there, just leave it. We're going to do what's called faulting. When everything is laid, we're going to go back over everything and um, fault it. It's a technique that I'll show you. With that tamping brush, what exactly are you tamping? Because it looks like you're only doing very specific little bits. But yeah. for me, as not knowing what's happening, it looks like there's lots of bits. Mm. So I don't understand what. Yeah, well, I'm just doing the bites that are dry enough, as if I do it too early. Yeah. Well, the punch of the gold. Right. So the top, <coughs> excuse me, the top will dry more quickly than the bottom. Right. So initially, just tamping down, and then later on, we can brush with a bit more boldness. Is there a reason for starting around the uh, kibitos rather than a more tricky bit on the face? Um, yes, because um, if you gild the bottom, then the kibitos, when you do the kibitos, the water will, see how the water's coming down there? That will go on top of the gold you've laid and hand it on that. Okay. So now we um, start to lay the rest. Um, I think I'll gild that part now, and then work. Try to do it um, the same order every time you gild, so I always start there. The reason being that when you burnish, obviously you want to start to burnish where you started to lay the gold. So likewise when you do the back, always try to sort of start at the same place so you don't have to remember where do I start. Otherwise you might start burnishing the later stuff and leave the early stuff, which would be too hard. So I'll probably go around that way. So we want the water to go away from the gold, so we'll go this way. So now we're going to have a slightly larger gold label. Now don't be too mean with the gold, it's really your label which is the expense rather than the gold. So rather than try to cut little bits of gold to go all around that, just one big hunk of gold there. And it's not that expensive, the gold really. So, what is it? It's 18 pounds. It's about 70 pence a sheet, roughly. But if you take up 10 minutes to go around to save 20p, you know, it's not a good economy of time. So 
and make it concave, it comes out more easily like that. You've got to bend it a bit. If you try to go like that, it'll all flop in. So with your thumb and your fingers there, make it concave, and it'll come out nicely. Okay, I'll do a big one for you. Now this is a medium one. So I'm going to lay there and go that direction. So I want the gold to stick out that side. Try to sit in the or stand in the, in the place where you can see the reflection off the water because, as you see, it absorbs in very quickly, and you don't want dry areas before you lay the gold. So you've got to see the reflection. Oops. So I, I just splashed a bit there with the gold, so that was stained a bit. So you see, I'm moving it around. Every time you lift up, there's a danger of splashing gold. So I just slide around. My hand's resting on the icon, only the white part. You don't want your hand to slide over the, um, the bowl, because you put grease on. And you'll notice that when you come to put the gilding water on, it may not, it may not um, sit there. It'll be resisted by the grease. And you're putting the gilding water straight over the gesso? Yeah, that's not uh, yeah. about. There's no harm in that. Okay. You can put in water until it's all wet, do you? Yeah. Mm. The bigger the gold leaf, the more difficult it is to, to lay without cracking. That's wet there, so I might as well lay a bit of gold there. Even now and then, um, with your knife, wipe it clean, you may get dust or uh, stuff settling there. You don't want that out of the gold. It's very important not to have any grease on the knife, too. Yeah. With the grease, what if you have cream on our faces? Uh, just try it. Um, <laughs> cream on your face? Shaving. <laughs> <laughs> or shaving cream, exactly, in your case. <laughs> <laughs> or should we? I don't know. There is not much grease in the Just check the underside. If it's flopping, you blow it. Why did it stick? Yeah. So that's flopping, it will just be wearing you dry. So don't forget to keep your eye on what you've laid, so you um, can brush it out. And get, it's so easy to get involved with laying that you forget to tamp what, what you've laid. In most cases with this extra thick, you, you can get away with one layer, but if, if you're not happy, with what you've done, you can double yield. So ideally you'd do that after you had um, polished it all with your big um, gilder's mop, and then you would repeat this process, but you'll put a touch of, uh, of size into your gilding water.
why do you go with the water over the gesso? Um, um, the speed, really. Okay, so it's not. It's not going to affect the uh, the paint, the painted surface at all. It's hardly any. The alcohol will evaporate, and the water will evaporate, and there's hardly any size in it, so it won't affect the absorbency of the, the gesso. Move the icon around so you're laying the gold in a comfortable direction. After I made this, I must go back to the gold. And, um, I think there's probably enough um, instruction for this. I think um, I do, you don't need to see me lay the whole lot. I'll continue laying um, so I don't stop halfway. And probably in about an hour to be ready to. Um, to burnish. I'm, st I'm still not entirely clear about when, how you know when it's time to go back and... Um, if you come close, I'll, I'll point out. See how fat those wrinkles are there. If I tap that, I'll, I'll break the gold. Um, whereas here, see they're a lot thinner, those wrinkles there, so that's fine. Now I can stroke that. So I start in there. So always stroke in the opposite direction you've laid. So when you're sure that all the water's gone, you can push more and more on the heels. So initially it's just the touch, but then later on it's on the heel. So you have a lot of pressure. In fact, some people don't um, like to burnish the gold. They're just happy to polish with the gilder's mop. I'm not putting full pressure yet, but you can see how um, shine it can get just with them. Um, you see that there? If I touch that now, I'll burst the gold. See if there's too much water. So you did burst the gold there, could you just overlap the gold um, in the next one? You, you can, yes, but, but because you've got two layers of gold when you burnish, you'll find that that is a slightly different colour than the rest. Mm -hmm. So you should leave that until you... It depends how big, if it's a big um, fault you've, you've made, then um, you, you might even put a bit of gilded water with a whole lot and lay a big leaf, or if it's a small, but you'll just leave it till it's faulted. Okay, any questions? The time's going to be a bit awkward because I'll then have to um, show you about burnishing. Mm -hmm. but, um, so you go over this part? Right I'll just leave that somewhere like that. Yeah, I've got, I'll have, I left that because I'm going to put a red line anyway. Uh -huh. But I'll have to fault that later. Uh -huh. I'll show you about faulting when I've laid the whole thing. Then I'll stop you for a few minutes. Faulting's quite straightforward. Okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So all your gilding wood is ready.